Run, hide, fight. Those are just some of the key words LMPD used yesterday as far as what they tell everyone in a situation of what a group of board members were, were in a conference room in that old National Bank having a meeting when they were gunned down. This is just a little bit of what we're hearing from city leaders and, and officials who are close to this investigation are Isaiah Kim Martinez and Eric uh, Eric King who with GMK were at that news conference just moments ago listening to all of this soaking it in. We learned another name of, of an officer who was there who potentially was the one to take this gunman down. Let's go straight to them with what we know. Well, Brooke, let's start with some of that need to know information that you referenced there. First of all, we do know as far as the numbers in the hospital that there are currently four people still in the hospital, two in the ICU, including the one officer, right. Officer Wilt, Nicholas Wilt in this case, who is recovering from brain surgery. We know that he was hit with a bullet to his head. From an AR-15. From an AR-15. We did confirm the weapon used in this situation, a rifle specifically in this case, um, as well as we also heard from uh, you of L Health talking about just the amount of resources they needed 170 units of blood receiving help from the American Red Cross all day. We understand trauma, anything with regards to trauma uh, related surgeries require the most blood. So those are some of the facts we know right now, Eric, but obviously uh, we know a little bit more when it comes to details of what officers were involved as well. Right. So when we talk about Officer Galloway, we know he was a training officer for Officer Wilt, who is in critical condition right now. And we've also learned that he was the person that ultimately killed the shooter and mm -hmm. neutralized the threat. He was also grazed by a bullet, as we learned today as well. Now, going back to what you were saying about blood, we, we, we're putting this kind of at the top of what we talk about because of its importance. There's so much uh, questions, so many questions out there about how can I help? Right. And one thing that I thought was notable about when the Red Cross was talking and when Dr. Smith was talking about the need for blood donations, they said the blood that is already in house is what is actually saves lives. And that's what was life-saving for so many people yesterday. Sure. So that's why they're continually pressing the notion that giving blood every day is important. They need supplies every day because it's what they have on hand that actually saves lives. Now, we can talk more about the suspect as well. They were able to offer some new information about him. We know that the assault rifle that was used in the attack yesterday was purchased legally on April the 4th mm -hmm. here in Louisville from a... Uh, uh, she described it as a local dealership. I'm dealership. assuming she just means a gun shop in the metro area. Uh, was purchased legally. They also uh, re-emphasized the fact that or Travis Breeze was on, on the scene yesterday of a home connected uh, to the suspects. Uh, well, connected to the right. suspect, his home in this case. They did confirm today, police, that they recovered uh, items of interest in this case. They did execute a search warrant. They would not elaborate on what exactly they found and how it poten potentially connects to a motive here. But we did see video yesterday that there was a, a laptop being yeah. held. So obviously you can imagine that is the top of the list when it comes to, to interest here. They also said that the body camera footage will be released today. Interim Chief uh, Gwen Villaroyal said that would be released later today, of course, edited for some of the sensitivity, the graphic nature. Of course, of course. So there's two sides of this. Normally body camera footage is not just for any time an officer's hit, but any time an officer fires their weapon hits another person. So these are two separate kind of right. instances of footage that, that they're getting out. And they're investigating this from two different sides. They're sure. investigating this on an internal basis, which is going to be done uh, similar to a homicide investigation. In fact, it is going to be a homicide investigation. That's for the actual shooting that took place inside the bank. Then there's going to be the external side of the investigation, which is going to be by the public integrity unit for Metro Police. I want to talk about the mayor, mm -hmm. some of the things that he had to say. One of the things that we know to be true already is this was the 146th mass shooting in the country wow. this year. Mayor, mayor uh, Greenberg was pointing out that 40 people have been shot to death in this city this year alone, calling it beyond horrific, beyond what we can and will accept. So he had some suggestions. He talked uh, about uh, what, what he's, his administration has done, but he also says we have to look to the state legislature mm. to change some laws to give Louisville the autonomy to address its unique gun epidemic and also be able to uh, get these guns off the streets and stop them from being auctioned off. We're actually going to hear from Mayor Greenberg in just a little bit. We'll get back to that here. His urgency, not just for the state legislature, but from Congress as well. Brooke.
All right. And again, 40 people lost to gun violence this year in Louisville. Um, and that is including the man, as we mentioned, outside of JCTC, which was an unrelated separate targeted incident. But 40 people already this year, and we are in April. Well, we are also vividly reminded that one of the first mass shootings in America happened in downtown Louisville 33 years ago. In fact, the term mass shooting wasn't even being used in September of 1989. The surgeries lasted all day, many of them going in just a few until just a few hours ago. The tragedy of Standard Gravier, a printing company attached to the Courier Journal. Eight workers were killed, 12 were shot and injured. The Louisville mayor at the time, Jerry Abramson, rushed to the scene, helping to rush people to those ambulances. Joseph Westbecker, an employee who was on disability for mental illness, came to that plant and started shooting at 8.30 in the morning with an AK-47 and many other guns in his possession. On the 30th memorial of this shooting in 2019, victim Jackie Miller shared with WHAS 11 how there's more to gun violence than the weapons used. Standard Gravure, they haven't learned anything from any of these shootings. All these people know how to do is scream, gun, gun, gun. Well, I want to tell people something. That day I was shot, that gun did not walk in by itself. The Louisville Police Chief at the time, Richard Dotson, laid out on a table all the confiscated weapons and ammunition recovered. And from then, it was clear Westbecker had more firepower and a bigger gun than what police were carrying at the time. All right, a lot more to get to here at noon. We'll be right back.